I have this nickname given by my Singaporean friends uh, called the Giant Clam Girl. So every time they see me, they would say, say oh hey, that's the Giant Clam Girl uh, or the girl who studies giant clams. Hello, my name is Mei Lin. Uh, I'm a Senior Research Fellow at the Tropical Marine Science Institute with the National University of Singapore. I study marine science and I focus on different marine animals uh, and also looking at how they interact with the marine environment and vice versa, how does the changes in the marine environment affect these marine animals. When I was an undergraduate student, I decided to embark on a research project with one of the supervisors in my department. I took part in a project looking at the uh, merry culture of giant clams. Uh, and in fact, it was one of the most challenging undergraduate research projects that I had taken up as a student. It was looking at how we can actually better breed these animals in the laboratory setting uh, and followed by actually using these cultured animals for further experiments. That got me into marine ecology, which I did a PhD entirely on giant clams uh, in NUS. Presently, my overall research interest is on marine ecology. Very specifically, I'm also looking at the merry culture of iconic species such as the hard corals, the giant clams and cowries, and also from other projects, the sea urchins uh, and other mussel species as well. So these projects actually look at how we can better breed them in a laboratory setting so that we can actually produce them in bigger numbers for experimental work. Uh, and to some extent, some of these individuals can also be used for conservation purposes. Another of my current research interests is looking at the impacts of marine plastic pollution around the different coastlines of Singapore. Uh, together with my colleague, we are actually actively going out every month doing sampling to see how marine litter abundance and distribution changes in our shoreline over time. So today we're here at the St. John's Island National Marine Lab, in short, SJI NML. It is the only offshore marine station in Singapore located on St. John's Island itself. We have had a good history of about 20 years being on this island looking at high impact marine science research uh, which spans from looking at biofouling research to marine biodiversity as well as also more recently looking at the impacts of marine microbiomes focus on bacteria on how these communities can actually affect and influence marine organisms and the environment in our local waters. Some of the research groups that we have hosted come from various institutions in Singapore, including NUS, NTU, SIT uh, and SUTD as well. For the Mariculture program, we are also interested to actually develop protocols that are suitable for growing them in a laboratory setting. So one of the research topics that I have been pursuing over the last 15 years is understanding giant clams. From knowing how to breed them in the laboratory to actually also understanding the kinds of threats and challenges that they face uh, in the oceans. So one of the current projects that I'm um, still working on is actually looking at how we can better inform uh, the conservation and management of giant clams, not just in Singapore but in Southeast Asia as well. And the reason for choosing Southeast Asia as a region, not just because it's where my home is, but it's also um, the, the region where there is a high biodiversity of giant clam species. And conservation is not really just a, a single location, it's also about being able to understand and see that connectivity between every, every one of us in this region. So even though the research itself is progressive, a lot of it you don't see the direct links with how we can actually better inform conservation and management until you actually understand how they are behaving in the environment and wow. When you actually take time, you'll notice that they have very subtle behaviours, subtle changes in their movements that 
sort of gives you an indication what they are doing um, in the water. I think it's really because that we actually get that chance to see them in a different light uh, that makes me fell in love with them for, for so many years. After completing my first research project uh, and I managed to publish a paper, I was really proud of the work. But at the same time, I started to ask myself, how do I share this research outcome with others beyond the academic community that can actually access and read these publications behind paid walls? So that got me started with trying to figure out my way what exactly science communication is and how can I use science communication to do not just communicating and talking about the research work that I do with the giant clams but also how to use it to do advocacy and raise more awareness about marine biodiversity and conservation in Singapore. I decided to dive a little bit deeper by actually applying to be a TED Fellow with the very uh, popular TED Talks. Uh, you know, I had uh, a lot of feedback coming, you know, uh, people that I have not met before from all over the world writing to me, saying that, that I've seen your TED Talk and it's really interesting that I've learned so much about giant clams in just five minutes. That became one of my major turning points in crafting science communication skills uh, as part of my career uh, as an academic researcher and using it to my advantage to actually help not just speak up and advocate for underappreciated marine animals but also to actually tell a story about them and about myself as a researcher studying these animals. One of the things that really attracts me to Singapore's seashores is because it is so underappreciated just because it's very hard to actually see the marine life that lives under the murky waters around our island. And I really truly value that because like, it's almost like being able to see them as warriors that survived after so many tribulations in that sense. Uh, and you know, being able to share their story with our local people that hey, you know, maybe we, there are many different ways that we can learn about them, not just through an appreciation of nature, but being able to see how their resilience can also be applicable to everybody's daily life. I believe until today that every one of us can make a difference, no matter how small our effort starts off with. Some of the threats and challenges that giant clams face in their natural environment include overfishing. Other more up-and-coming recent threats include climate change. But I guess like eventually one of my hopes uh, is to be able to see similar numbers that we culture in our laboratory uh, that can be also still found back in our local waters.